Hello guys, Tav HD here and welcome back to another video and today we will be installing this Seagate Barracuda 1TB hard drive into my home server PC. So this drive will be used to archive all of the videos that I made in 2020 and since that year has now ended I can transfer all of the data to it. I believe there's about 600 and something gigabytes so one terabyte should definitely be enough. I know this drive works. I tested it a few weeks ago and it's just been sat on my desk since then waiting for this moment. So there it is and we're just going to put it in the computer and I managed to find a SATA cable. I had to pull this out of another computer. I'm running low on these so I shall order some more at a later date so I can plug in more drives to more computers when the time comes but that's enough faffing let's try and install this now okay so here's the computer it's the Antec P101 silent I believe I actually can't remember but I've come across a slight problem this power supply is a thermal take it's a 550 watt and it turns out that there is only one more SATA power cable for this power supply and it's here and that, as you can see, will not reach to where a hard drive needs to go. So I'm going to have to order an extension cable for that, if they even exist. I'll have a look on Amazon later, but I think for now what I'm going to do is have to unplug one of these drives and just give the new one power up there until I get an extension cable. Good job I don't need to access these drives, these are archives for older years of video so I don't need access to those all the time anyway. So for now that shouldn't be a problem so yeah I can just use this power cable to reach up there as long as the side panel will still fit but yeah should do. So now let's get the drive and put it in one of the bays. Okay so here is the caddy we are going to use, here is the drive and this is a toolless design so I can just clip it in. This is the correct way round. I've got to line the screw holes up with the sticky out bits inside the mount. That's that side on. Now if I pull it open there we go that drive is now clipped in nice and secure. Now I can slide this back into the case. All right, here is the computer case. Here is the drive. Let's just slide it in. It should go in, no problem. There we go, that is now secure. So I can turn the case around and now we can connect the wires. All right, so we're going to have to use, as I said, this SATA power. So let's just connect that into there. I will get my SATA cable, now this is right angled at one end and just a normal flat one at the other. I'm going to see if I can get the right angled side in just so the side panel will fit on better. And um, No I cannot get that to go in, there is not enough clearance so I shall use the flat side, plug it into there and then I'll try and route this cable through to the front and I believe on this motherboard, yeah, there are only four SATA headers. I'm currently using three, so this is the last available one. So when I want to use more drives, I shall have to get some sort of PCI SATA card, but I'm just threading the cable through this hole and I'm just going to plug it into the Motherboard don't need to film this, it's not really too exciting. And there we go, that cable is now connected and this should just push down fine when I put the side panel on. The cable management in this computer isn't the best but I think it will do for now. Once I get that SATA power extension I'll probably put some more effort into it then. But for now I think that's everything I can do. Let's plug this thing in see if it works and then transfer data to the drive. All right, so I've plugged the computer back in where it goes. The cable management is utter rubbish, but there's not too much I can do about that. All the cables have to be there and there's just not really much I can do to arrange them. So let's turn the computer on. 
make sure it boots and then put the data on the drive. It's also worth mentioning I've connected the 4 terabyte external that used to be connected to my main computer. That's now going to live over here. Okay, here we are in this PC. Apologies about the angle. And it is indeed showing up YT Archive 3 2020. I already renamed it before I put it in this machine when I was testing it a few weeks ago. So now we've got local disk, which is the OS. YT Archive 1, which is 2014 to 2017. Then we are going to have YT Archive 3 2020 and of course number 2 will also be here once I get that cable and then we've got backup this is a little two and a half inch external drive which backs up my main computer over the network and then finally we've got the Seagate backup plus drive this is the drive that used to be connected to my main computer now all the files that are on this is on my RAID enclosure connected to my main computer so this is a clone of everything that's currently on there. I'm going to set it up so it automatically backs up any new data onto this drive too. But what I need to do now is transfer the 2020 YouTube data. So I'm going to open up the YT Archive 3 on this side of the screen. Then on the right I will go into my YouTube folder, go into Archives, get 2020, and I'm simply going to copy it across and there we go the transfer has finished it's been quite a while the actual transfer took about an hour and a half but i've come back maybe two and a half hours later because i had to leave the house and i came back and saw that it has indeed finished with no problem so here it is yt archive 3 2020 300 gigabytes of free space probably won't take up any more of that space as this is just for 2020 and all content has now finished for that year. So if we have a look, every single month is in here and everything has indeed worked just fine and I can access any of the clips. So I think that that is pretty much it. I have managed to archive all of my data just fine. So thank you for watching this video and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.